What's up guys, Lewin here at GarageBand and beyond. Today I'm gonna to be showing you my 1984 Martin D28 that I found in the garbage. But first I'm just gonna play it and so let's do that. This guitar is, I think it, it, it really likes me. Um, I think it's happy that I saved it from the garbage pile. So like I said, 1984 Martin D28 uh, that I found in the garbage many, many years ago, probably like 16 years ago, I'd guess. Um, maybe even more than that. But <clears throat> anyway, for many years, I lived in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I had a friend who was moving out of a house that she had lived in with many roommates. And uh, I went by, you know, just say hi, check out how the move was going. Uh, she was talking to my girlfriend at the time, and I sort of spied something in this huge pile of garbage in their front yard, which was sort of just the back right here of the guitar, just this little corner of the back. And um, so I went over and I sort of looked at it and I was like, hey, is that a guitar in the pile? And she was like, yeah, it is. Um, so I pulled it out and, I, and as soon as I saw the rosewood back inside, I was like, wait a second, is that a Martin? So I pulled it out. The headstock was broken off, like completely gone. And, but I did notice that there were strings attached to the bridge and they were inside the body. So sure enough, the strings were still attached to the headstock, thankfully. Nice clean break, which I knew could be easily glued by a friend of mine who was a luthier, is a luthier. Um, so anyway, I asked her if I could have the guitar and she was like, yeah, you know, the story is uh, I had a roommate who owed us a bunch of money. We were throwing her out of the house and she was like, well, I have this expensive guitar. You can have it and sell it and then uh, take that money, da, 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 da. She obviously never sold the guitar. Um, the guitar sat around the house for many years, got knocked over at a party they had, the headstock broke off then, and that was sort of the end of it. They were like, well, now that guitar is a piece of junk and they threw it away. So I was the, you know, the guy who saw it first and I got it, you know. Anyway, let's keep playing. Drop D on a D28. You want to sound like the Allman Brothers? Just get a D28 and do drop D. <laughs> um, let's see, let's do, just do something I do a lot here. So this guitar, let's talk a little bit about it. Um, so like I said, I had my friend at the time, um, still a friend, luthier guy, glued the headstock back on for 20 bucks. I told him not to clean it up, leave it dirty. I was super poor at the time. Um, and I just said, leave it dirty. I like guitars with battle scars, which this one has plenty of great ones. Um, so he left it nice and dirty. And that was it. We glued the headstock back on and it has never needed a setup. It has never needed anything. Um, over the years I have, you know, wanted to do a few things like one thing that it should get done is the bridge is peeling just a little, little bit over here. Um, you know, it's like, m I might be able to slide a playing card in there. It's that small, but over the 15 plus years that I've owned this instrument, that has never changed. And I've kept a good close eye on it. I've kept the instrument humidified more or less all the time. Um, but you know, kept an eye on that bridge and it hasn't peeled at all. It hasn't peeled anymore. So, you know, and it plays great. Uh, it, I just sort of left it alone. It's because it didn't need it.
plus I like guitars with battle scars, you know. Um, if you've seen the video about my HD28 called the, the video is called the best acoustic guitar in the world, uh, cause that's what I think the HD28 is. Um, yeah, that guitar's got plenty of battle scars as well, as does this. Like, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a big scratch here and I distinctly remember the night. I was in Italy jamming with a ton of people and I just did one of these things and I just felt it come across the top and I was like, oh no. And I looked down, sure enough, permanent scar. Uh, but I have that memory. It was a fun night and I, I probably would have forgotten about it if I hadn't made a permanent mark on my instrument. <laughs> but that's the fun of having guitars and living life and traveling and all that stuff. Let's throw a capo on this thing. These guitars, uh, D28s especially, um, when you get them up above the fifth fret, there's just something super nice. And I, I do think it's because, you know, George Harrison used a D28 when they recorded Here Comes the Sun. Um, can't do too much of that, but um, it's super special on the higher frets. So, um, you know, I did want to mention to you guys that the picks that I like uh, are the blue chip picks. This is a CT55, which technically does classify as a mandolin pick. Um, I'm also a mandolin player, so I like it uh, for both, but it's great on guitar. This is a regular Fender Heavy pick, um, and I can just give you a little sample of what this sounds like in comparison. Uh, so let's just do... chip back to the fender blue chip Okay, so what hopefully you can hear uh, coming through the speakers here um, are is is the difference. So this just doesn't have as much high end. This is this is really bright, and you get a lot of that like plastic on metal sound, um, which isn't great if that's not something you're going for. But if you're like a purist acoustic guitar guy, check out those blue chip uh, picks because they are really really great. They're basically the replacement since we can't use tortoise shell anymore. Um, these are sort of what everybody's using in the world. All the, all the like serious pickers, you know. Uh. They're just super, super fun, uh, self-lubricating, so they don't actually wear out as, you know, they don't wear out. That's sort of what they claim. This one's about four or five years old, and it, it still has a good rounded point. The bevels are still nice. Uh, still a perfectly good pick, which I couldn't say about any, like, Dunlop or Fender that's five years old and that I've used as much as this pick. Um, It's funny that I'm going to encourage you guys to do this, uh, but if you know you, you got a local guitar center, whatever, Sam Ash, just a regular good old guitar shop, uh, if you're over there, it wouldn't kill you to open up the dumpsters and see what they have in there because people throw away guitars, especially guitar shops, they throw away gear all the time. So if you're a handy person or you know you, you like to repair stuff or you got friends who do, always dumpster dive at guitar shops because there's always very often there's fun things in there for you to just grab and take home you might end up throwing it away yourself but you might fix it um i did find another guitar a godin acousticaster which i totally love um I, I found that in a dumpster at a guitar shop and I'll, I'll make a video about that one day but you know don't just walk by piles of garbage without you know 
at least shooting an eye over at it and being like, any guitars, anything interesting in there? You, I found five guitars in my life in the garbage. I'm 43, and just walking down streets or opening dumpsters occasionally, that kind of thing, you will be surprised at what you find because, you know, one man's trash is another man's treasure kind of thing. Um, super fun guitar to play you know I've actually rented this guitar for multiple recording sessions and in fact Randy Travis used this uh, I can't remember the name of the album but whatever album came out let's say 17 years ago something like that um, 16 years something like that he borrowed he was renting this guitar at 100 bucks a day it was like a great time in my life because there was like good <laughs> like a hundred dollars a day the guitar was making more money than I was um, but it was awesome and you know it was like one of those things I would go in every day clean it and change the strings and um, just make sure it was ready to rock for Randy <laughs> Oh, there's another part of this story that I think is funny. So after I got the guitar, uh, the girl's boyfriend, who was a friend of mine, Mike Chavez, a great drummer from Santa Fe. If you're in Santa Fe and need a drummer, look up Mike Chavez. He is awesome. Um, but he called me and was like, hey, man, I think you and I both know that that instrument is worth money and you just got it for free. And I was like, well, yeah, but, you know, she had no interest in the guitar. It was going to the garbage, da 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 And he was like, well, she actually wants to learn to play the guitar. So, you know, I don't know, should you take that guitar, da da And I was like, let's not give the beginner the D28. She has no clue, you know. Uh, so I worked it out with him and I gave him a really awesome uh, late 70s Honer acoustic, solid top, solid back and sides, really beautiful instrument. And in fact, I do recommend those older Honers. There's a couple of years there, late 70s, early 80s, there were some great guitars coming out of the Honer factory that no one ever talks about. Um, so if you don't care about like labels and you know, like if you're not vain, <laughs> let's say that, uh, you know, if you're just looking, if you just looking for good guitars, check out those old Honers. But I gave her that guitar and um, for free, obviously. And, and as far as I know, she never took a guitar lesson in her life. So, uh, you know, <laughs> still a good deal for all people, I think. whole lot more to tell about this guitar except you know like I said check out those piles of garbage and dumpsters because you find free guitars it happens guys it's totally true and if you're in the market for like an older Martin but don't want to pay like crazy money for the 60s and you know 50s and before that these early 80s Martins this is an 84 I have the 1990 HD 28 that they're still making great guitars in the 80s and early 90s they still make great guitars let me just say that but if you want one that has been aged uh, properly just check out those years because they're not that sought after for collectibles or collectors rather um, so not a lot of collectors are you know snapping them up they will in another 10 or 15 years 20 years uh, but if you're smart enough buy one now and then just hold on to it and uh, love it and play it and then at some point if you ever need to just sell it and you'll make money on it if I tried to sell this now I would definitely make money <laughs> <You know? laughs> Another thing I should mention is that um, these songs that I play in these videos here, uh, these are all improv, basically. I mean, sometimes I play the same improvisation thing between videos. I think I did some of these in the HD28 video, but in general, these are me improv in front of a camera. These aren't like originals or songs you can look up. And as much as I do appreciate you guys asking to do that, um, you know, that, that's just not the case. These haven't been recorded or properly dealt with or anything. So. Um, 
this is where you get to hear it. You like these songs? Watch the video over and over and over. I got plenty of videos here too, you know, on GarageBand and beyond. Okay, that song wasn't mine. My my friend Chris Grunwald wrote that. I can't, I can't, uh, I don't want to take any credit away from that amazing songwriter. Chris Grunwald, check it out. You guys, he's a great songwriter. Anyway, um, the Martin HD28 that I found in the garbage is, you know, by far one of my favorite guitars because A, it was free, and B, it's a D28. And, um, you know, what else can you say? Free Martin guitar, thumbs up. So that's about it for the day. You guys, you know, um, I hope you enjoyed looking at my battle scarred guitar here. She's a great old girl and I really, really love it. And I hope you guys, you know, enjoyed watching me uh, play it for you and all that kind of stuff. So I'm gonna play you out guys. So I'll just say, uh, have a great weekend and check out all these other videos I've made here on GarageBand and Beyond. There's, you know, guitar videos and recording videos, uh, equipment review videos, all sorts of videos. I mean, tour van videos and blah, blah, blah. The list goes on and on. Tons and tons and tons of videos. So check them out. Uh, otherwise, I will see you guys next week. And uh, here we go. Let's just play it out, kids.